إلى الله نمضي يا بني أهل من سبق ويا حب قلب من تقى الله قد خفق تمر بنا الأيام سرعة أننا نرى سرعة الأيام كالبرق الحمد لله الذي أرسل رسول بالهدى ودين الحق ليذير على دين كل وكفى بالله شهيدا وأشهد الله لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسول أما بعد Alhamdulillah, Allah has granted us another opportunity today. We have a podcast here with Brother Abdullah. Brother Abdullah came from far away. But I'm not going to mention where he came from. Uh, Abdullah here, he's been going through a lot over the years in his life. And this is a blessing that Allah has given us another opportunity. We sit here, we talk about issues where it's happening right in our mix, where it's affecting Muslim brothers and sisters. And a lot of Muslim brothers and sisters are heedless into this subject until when they get hit and when they get hit they start going to the wrong hands looking for help and after several years then they end up in a corruption we ask Allah to open the eyes of Muslim brothers and sisters we ask Allah to cure brother Abdullah and remove him from all his ordeals Salaam alaikum wa rahmatullah wa how are you brother Abdullah Alhamdulillah. how is everything Alhamdulillah is good it could be better Alhamdulillah how, when did it started? And just explain to me all your problems and when did it start and what happened, where do you went? Okay, it's mm. very complicated, it's a very long history. But it's not just one instance. I've had sihr, masaha, ain, and all sorts of things done on me several times. I calculated over a dozen times. It goes back to my parents back home. Uh, their family were really jealous of my father. He's very academic. Mm -hmm. And he came to England. He had the opportunity to study masters at university. And they were pres prestigious university, but basically his sister-in-law and his cousins used to see hell on my dad and on my mum as well. Mm -hmm. I've looked into it and I spoke to my dad. Unfortunately, he passed away several years ago. But before he passed away, he, he told me a lot of things. But basically, he had a lot of sihr masaha and life blockages done on him by his jealous relatives back home. And when I was born. I was very underweight. I was born on time, but I weighed two and a half pounds. And basically, when my mother was pregnant with me, she had a lot of health problems and a lot of issues, almost abortion, things like that. And my belief, my father believes that when my mum was pregnant with me, she had sihr and masahad done on her. Were you in the belly? Whilst, yeah, whilst my mum was carrying me, and it got passed on to me. And through the research I've done the last several years, it's, it is possible for that to happen. Absolutely. It is possible. Yeah, so it is. I I've just done a ruqya a few weeks, months back. Right. There was a little girl who, while well, she's in the belly, yeah. someone done sihr on, okay. on that woman. Right. And the sihr affected even the little girl. Now, the little girl, what she does is she just goes in the corners of the house yeah. and feeds food and speaks to the corner of the house. Not only in the house, even when she goes to nursery, she does that. She's just three years old. And there's another case as well, the same. There was another four years old girl. The black magic was supposed to hit the mother. Right. It ended up hitting the little girl. Yeah. So this happens. I know. In my experience, black magic and shaitan jinns, they don't discriminate. They'll hit any target. Absolutely. Not just the intended target. I'll tell you one thing. They love punishing son of Adam. Yeah. They love punishing son of Adam. For me, it's only one reason. Why? Is to make their iman weak. To lose hope in Allah. It's true. It's yeah. true. And I'll come to this point later yes. on. Yeah. But I, in my experience, children are very easy targets for sihr and uh, masaha for yeah. sihr and jinn. Yeah. But after I was born, um, I, I had, you know, I, my parents took me, took me back home to show me to the family. But I came down with serious gut infections. I was six weeks old. Mm -hmm. Came back to the UK. I was in ICU for six weeks. And uh, I almost passed away on three occasions. But the doctors resuscitated me. But ever since then, I've had a lot of digestive problems, and digestive problems are, I've come to know, are common with problems of sihir and masaha. Mm -hmm. And I've had digestive problems since my childhood, right up to, until my adulthood. When I was about four, maybe five years old, a, a so-called family friend came over to visit my parents, and uh, he gave my sister and myself red clothes. For me, red shirt, red shorts, for my sister, red dress. And this is not acceptable in the Sunnah. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, do not wear three types of clothes, full orange, yeah. full yellow, or full red. Yeah. Mm. You're not allowed my to wear it. My parents did not know mm. this, unfortunately. Mm. It's, it's a travesty. But what happened was, I didn't wear the clothes. My mum didn't give it to me to wear, but she gave the red dress to my sister to wear. 
and then my sister started having epileptic fits. Subhanallah. So um, after having uh, yeah, dressing. A few, days, a few days after, she started having epileptic fits and she was becoming unconscious. She was taken to hospital. She's only about five or six years old. Oh, that's a time. very young age. And basically, she wouldn't talk. She was completely, how can I say, incommunicado. She was just in a vegetable state. Mm. Wouldn't talk to anyone and she kept having epileptic fits. And my dad became frustrated and uh, he started crying. And he was shaking her, then she just woke up, you know, she just came out of that trance and she yeah. started crying, talking to my dad. But it's this travesty, my dad, he didn't know anything about Rukia, things like that, even though he's a very educated man. He came from a village, yeah. uh, back from back home. This is from the Allah. Allah blesses you with the knowledge of the deen or knowledge of the deen. So knowledge of the deen, if you are blessed with it, you achieve high. Yeah. Knowledge of the dunya, this is why you become blind to every spiritual issues. It's true, mm. it's true. But the, what's really shocking is that um, even though I didn't wear the red clothes, I used to sleep in the same room as my father because my younger brother, he had some health issues. Well, he was young actually, he used to stay with my mum. Yeah. But I woke up during the night cause, uh, and I was in my bed. I just couldn't sleep. So I switched on my lamp. And you know the picture pop-up box that children have? I was looking at that. Then mm -hmm. I looked up at the clock to see what time it was. And wallahi, I saw a uh, ifrit jinn, a red shaitan jinn, mm -hmm. completely red red horns sticking out of his head. Uh, he had a, a trident in his left hand mm. and he had a forked tail and he had claws for hands and clawed feet as well. And he scared the living daylights out of me. How I, old were you then? I was about five at the time. SubhanAllah. And I was shaking, I was scared and- Scream? No, I lost my voice. I, mm. I, I, nothing came out. I that was in the night? In the night, yeah. yeah. What happened in the morning? I was that. shaking. I, I told my mum and dad, and my Did dad, they were shocked, and my, they went, my dad went completely silent. But I found out several years later, back in the late 90s, my sister saw the same, same thing, yeah. mm. and she saw it four times, uh, twice in the, her bedroom, once in the bathroom, and once, I can't remember, somewhere else, I can't remember where it was, but four mm. times she saw it. Uh, and you only once? Only once. This sounds like you have magic deep-rooted, yeah. because for a child to see this, a yeah. four-year-old child, yeah. It's not normal. Either magic was placed in your own house, yeah. or you had something called Sihiru Mushtarik. Mm -hmm. Sihiru Mushtarik is black magic of collective. Yeah. Father, mother, children, all of them been squeezed in one pot. Exactly. I believe mm. I'm suffering from several types of Sihir Masa, especially generational mm. uh, Sihir. Mm. But the thing was that... I mean, the morning when you woke up, you told your mom that... Told my mom and dad... And that you, saw, you saw a jinn, and then you find out f several years later, yeah. Uh, yeah. you are... But yeah, but it's, it's the clothes that they get, the, the so-called friend gave, mm. they would have that sihr masa on it. And, you know, I just can't understand why he would do that to us. And when he gave the clothes to my mum and dad, he's, he was asking my mum, do you believe in Jalti Sahir? And sihr masaha, my mum said, no, no. Mm. And my dad said, hold on, why are you asking these questions? And then he said to my dad, silent, I'm not talking to you. Mm. And my dad went silent. And my mum, she's a very innocent village woman. And uh, it's a shame she wasn't very astute. But uh, she, she just blindly accepted it. And th that's uh, one of the issues I have. Uh, another issue when I was 18 years old, my father arranged my marriage to a cousin back home. And they did so without my knowledge. And what happened was that my dad had fallen ill and he suffered from depression. So we decided to go to India uh, just for one year. So we went there and I only found out just before we went and my father arranged my marriage to his younger brother's youngest daughter. Mm, SubhanAllah. And I don't like arranged marriages, I, you know, especially, well, I don't like especially cousin marriages, I don't like that. Mm. And I was not happy because my parents did not ask my permission or let alone inform me. So when we when we got there, I, I spoke to my uncle, my aunt, I said, look, this is, you know, this is not good. I know it's your, your family culture, your Khandan culture, but this is not my culture. And Islam clearly says you've got to ask permission for the boy and the girl as well. And he mm. didn't ask my permission, so I don't want to be married. But the thing is that, I found out during my time when we spent a year over there is that my uncle and especially his wife, they both did sihir. She was a jaldi ghani. Mm. She's a very nasty piece of work. She did jaldi sihir on, on, on me and a lot of people. And in revenge, what they did because I refused to marry their daughter. And I found out several years later. So this was about 15 years ago, I found out because my sister lives near. She had a uh, arranged marriage to a cousin. And that's another story because he beats and drinks and everything. Mm. But she found out from my uncle and aunt who did the Sihir Masa on me. Mm. Uh, Can you explain what is Sihir Masa? So the audience who Sorry, is, yeah. Sihir is the Arabic word for black magic. Right. Masaha is the Arabic word for jinn possession. Right. 
but basically, um, my uncle and aunt, they have two younger sons, and they told my sister about 15 years ago, because they felt really ashamed. They knew what their mum and dad had done, because they heard their mum and dad talking about it one night when, when I was living there for the year, when I was living overseas for the year, and they went to a Hindu sadhu, and basically, they paid him to destroy everything in my life, destroy my health, destroy my list, destroy my education, uh, make people... While you were in India? Yeah, while in India. And this was the thing that's how to last my entire lifetime. Mm. And to make people, especially women, absolutely hate me, and I'll never be able to get married. I'm almost 50 years old, and I had never been married, never had a rich I mean, To be honest, I tried, to, I tried very hard to get married, but even when I was in my 20s, uh, what happened was that I was only getting interest for women who were at least 10, years, 10, 12 years older than me, and they were divorced, and they had children, and this, they weren't right for me. Um, and I don't want to be disrespectful in any way, but they weren't right for me. Women my age and younger than me, they really hate me, especially young women, Muslim, non-Muslim women, absolutely hate me. They treat me with a lot of hostility, even though I don't do anything wrong, and I try to be a nice guy all the time. But I've had a lot of problems, r problems with my risk and education. They destroyed my education. It took me 26 years in seven different universities before I was finally awarded my degree. And even then, I was cheated out my first class honours. And I was awarded a third class degree and for two years. So you had to say, Yeah, exactly. To fail and everything. Exactly. Mm. And for two years, I had to do academic appeal before they agreed to award me 2 1, but I still feel cheated. I should have been awarded first class. But everything in my life has been completely destroyed. My sister in law, she's uh, from back home, Barry, and my older brother had arranged This goes on until now. Uh, until now. She's, yeah. a, she's a nasty person. How old are you now? Sorry to ask this, Abdullah. Uh, I'm just, uh, well, I'm like 49 and a half. Okay, subhanAllah. So, so uh, imagine somebody who is all his life failing and failing and failing and failing. Nothing going through because of sihr, because of black magic. We ask Allah to make it easy for Brother Abdullah and Allah remove his difficulties and our deal what he's going through. May Allah make it easy for you. I know you're going through emotion, which is, uh, is tough. I suffer from clinical depression, PTSD because of it. Yeah. I was sexually abused when I was a child. Subhanallah. So my sister. Yeah, subhanAllah. I suffered a lot of racism. I used to get who, who, who did abuse you when you were a child? Uh, a cousin from back home when he came to me. And uh, English teachers when I was in school. And believe Men. You know, I used to live here in Manchester when I was a kid. He is a man or a woman? There were uh, two men and one woman. All right. Yeah, and the cousin from back home. Nobody did anything to them. Yeah, my parents didn't even know. They yeah, they just get away with it. They got away with it. Sexual I abuse. Mean, I, I, I spoke to the police about it, mentioned to the police about it just a few weeks ago, actually, just about three months ago. Two of the people, they're dead now. So, Mr. Perfect's dead, Mrs. Bradshaw's dead. The other guy, he's still alive. He's in his late 70s. And, yeah. uh, but the thing These are Eng English teachers. English teacher, yes, yes. English um, guy. And, uh, but this happened back in the 70s and 80s, and back then they didn't have smart cameras, they didn't have smartphones, they didn't have CCTV. But, but this no happens until now, isn't it? Well, the sexual abuse stopped uh, in, ch in childhood after I left the school. But I no, I mean, I mean, uh, they, they're still abusing children, isn't it? Well, they retired, and right. two, two of them passed away. Oh, okay. But uh, I, I don't know if they abused other children. Well, I don't know. Yeah, but, but you see, it's a trend when they, they abuse one child, they will, they will not stop on abusing others. Because it's a sickness. Does, does that make sense? Yeah. And it could also be possession. It could be also what the genes that with you yeah. made you be as a target. That's it. Mm. That's it. I mean, genes possess an attack person internally, inside your body, and right. externally. So yeah. you've got the bad luck. And nasty people are attracted to you and they abuse yeah. you. We don't believe in bad on luck. But they, uh, they, I, yeah. I, I understand we don't believe because we're Muslims. Yeah. But they make the individuals from outside hate you exactly. for absolutely no reason. Exactly. Yeah. And they cause problems from you internally and, and exactly. externally. Bad yeah. things happen to you. Yeah, yeah. I know I'm Muslim, but we don't believe in luck. There's luck yeah. down to chance. We don't believe yeah, in yeah. chance. We don't believe, believe in that, Qadr. That's it. In the we believe in the decree of Allah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, if there's non-Muslims watching this, I need to explain this. In a yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely true. But I've had problems my entire life, yeah. and I've suffered from suicidal ideation because of it, and I believe it's because of what's Suicide, so, yeah, what's source of the shaitan. Yeah. Did you commit the suicide? Did you attempt it to commit? No, yeah. I felt like doing it, but I didn't dare. I always stop because it's haram. Yeah, absolutely it's true. It's always haram. It's because of the iman. That's it why. is. And it is Allah it has decreed you to commit suicide. That's it. Mm. I do cry a lot. Mm. I do suffer from depression because my life's been destroyed. Mm. But... You're not married until now. No. No, Allah make it easy for him to make you find a righteous wife. Allahumma amin. Okay.
But you know, I do cry a lot, but I always ask Allah for help. Yeah, it's it's tough. I know, I know it's tough. Not long like it is, but it's just no. got to the point where I'm, I can't live like this anymore. Mm. You have to be patient, uh, Brother Abdullah. You have to be patient, and you'll get over it. Uh, because uh, you've you've been oh, you've been there all these years. Uh, now you're almost fifty, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So you never know. Sooner or later, Allah will bring victory. I'm an old mm. man. Uh, yeah. The best nine years of my life been yeah. destroyed. Yeah, absolutely true. That's what I said. My child and my teenage years, my young adulthood. It's all yeah. these are the times when you you go out, you do things, you achieve things, and yeah. you get married. Yeah. I've not been able to achieve anything in my life. Yeah, but you still have time. You still have time to be patient. Allah can easily grant you things at this age and you'll be successful and you'll be whatever you wish to be. Mm. That's true. Yeah. I have an African friend and he mm. said to me a few years ago, yeah. said, brother, this dunya was not meant for you. Yeah. Uh, you'll find your happiness in akhirah. Yeah. Uh, that's wrong to say that because dunya was not made for any believer. Yeah. Yeah. Allah says, The one who wants dunya, we give it to them. And the ones who are akhira, we give it to them. Uh, as a believer, we need to ask the dunya and the akhira. Yeah. And our focus should be more upon akhira. Once it's more upon akhira, the dunya becomes smooth yeah. for us. Because we will have contentment. Uh, the contentment, if it's not there, Brother Abdullah, you will always struggle. I uh, have no contentment in my life. It is Allah who grants contentment. Yeah. Once you have the contentment, you will achieve everything. What makes you say that you have no contentment? All the abuses I suffered in my life, yeah. I can't sleep at night. Mm. And uh, what happened was this, because I said Masaha, mm. I suffered from Masaha, I suffered from Masaha, it takes mm. you away from the deen. So oh, yeah, of course. Happens, what happened is, let me just sure. give a uh, point to one thing is, whenever there's involvement of shaitan, yeah. and there's involvement of black magic, it makes it difficult for the individual to practice. Yeah, it's true. Tough. Three things happen. Three things. Brother Abdullah, is the salah, yeah. the sleep, yeah. and the daily living. All these will be difficult. Almost very, is very difficult to live. I suffer from a lot of insomnia. I can't sleep. Yeah, yeah. insomnia. Stress yeah. because of the sin masah as well. That's a common yeah. symptom. Of insomnia. Yeah. So that I have a lot of other symptoms, like digestive problems, mm. but also I have all these really weird sensations in my body. My eyes keep twitching. Mm. I feel strange sensations in my body, in my arms, my legs. Uh, like electric shock sensations or vibration sensations and also something keep I feel something like butterfly sensations in my stomach and my intestines mm. and in my arms and legs I can't just the closest way I can describe it is that something is moving it's like you know when you switch the water on for a hose yeah. pipe yeah. and the, wash, the water goes gushing through the water yeah. the hose pipe that's yeah. what it feels like yeah. and it, on and off when did you discover this that you have problem and the rock and everything can you explain all when this when I uh, this is back in about 2008 and I had a good African brother on my course He's a very uh, pious practicing Muslim brother. That's in the university. That's in the university. And one day, I, I said to him, I need to talk to you because you're the only person I know who I can trust. And I told him about all my problems I'm telling you. And he said to me, brother, you have really bad sihr masah problem. And he said he knows another brother who does Rukia. You know, and it's uh, Rukia Sharia. And uh, according to Hadith Sunnah and according to Islam, no, nothing haram. And he introduced me to the brother. And the brother started doing Rukia on me. And then I started feeling better. And then the brother said, you, should, you need to read the Quran every day, start praying five times a day. Absolutely. And it was because, uh, like you said, with the Sihr al-Masaha, it takes you away from your deen, you stop praying, you stop praying, you mm -hmm. stop reading the Quran. It makes it difficult. And you, 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 you always have thoughts in your mind that you want to do haram things. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I, I always had temptation to do haram things. And it's, you know... No, you never did it. Never did. Because it was, you know, I, I made steps towards doing it. Towards, I'll be honest, towards doing zina, but then I realized I can't do this, it's haram, Allah will punish me. Absolutely. And I stopped there and then. This is the sign of Iman. And uh, alhamdulillah. But the temptation was very strong, it was always there. But I started praying five times a day, and it's very difficult. And I started reading the Quran every day. And it's very difficult to try and get into that routine because of the sihr masaha on the wasf Yeah, because the of the, mas, the position. Because yeah. shaitan trying to drag you away from Iman, and it's very difficult. But I had to just stick with it because that's the advice was given, and that, that's the only way, way out. Forward. It's the yeah. only way forward, the yeah. only way out I knew from this misery. Yeah. So then I came across YouTube and I started looking at, you know, Rukia, typing in Rukia, and looking at lectures and things like that, how to do Rukia, and then 
uh, doing Google searches, things like that. So I, I gained some rudimentary knowledge and then the, there is a very good YouTube channel called um, Diaries of an Exorcist. Yeah, um, Abu Ibrahim. Exactly, very yeah. good brother, very knowledgeable. And that's when I started learning more and more about Islam and Wiki and things like that. And that, that's how things took off. Yeah. Tell me about him. So you learned from him. Did you went to him, Ibrahim? I went to him once. Yeah, and then what happens? Tell me what We happens. had a good chat like we're having now. Yes. And basically, he has a lot of experience, so he can draw on from his experience. And he mm. said to me that I have a serious deep-rooted Seher Masaha problem. And he, he believed it's also generational. It was done so th uh, th there several times, but he said one of the main times was done by parents that passed on to the children, not yeah, just me, yeah, but my yeah. siblings as well. And uh, so I had one Rukia session with him. And then I was supposed to go for other Rukia sessions, but unfortunately he stopped doing it because, um, and I've come across a lot of Muslim brothers who, who, who've had this, it's a, being Iraqi is an extremely dangerous job. Mm -hmm. When you help a patient who's afflicted with Sihar Masaha, the Shaitan Jinn starts start attacking the Iraqi. Mm -hmm. I know a Muslim brother who was Iraqi and he had a Shaitan Jinn come into his house and strang try to strangle him to death. Mm -hmm. So it's very dangerous. A lot of brothers end up quitting. So he told you this, that he stopped, uh, but Ibrahim told you to stop. Yeah, but he made this, I believe he, he made a small YouTube video that he's going to take a break uh, from it. Uh, he didn't go into too many details, but I knew when I, I mean, I messaged him. Uh, it was several years ago, so a long time ago, and basically he said he's taking a break because uh, for personal reasons. And I understood what he meant, and I didn't question it any further. Absolutely. Too. So I thought, okay, uh, I've got some rudimentary knowledge. I'll start watching other YouTube videos, mm. and uh, I'll try build on that, and I'll, 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 you know, try learn as much as I can from other sources. Mm. There's a book by Abu. Wahid Wali. Yeah. And he sword against uh, magicians and black magic. And he has a very good Rukia CD in there, which I listened to. Mm. He stopped doing Rukia, but he's still, yeah. he's still, uh, he's still giving da'wah in yeah. YouTube. Yeah. He stopped doing Rukia because people start believing in his awliya. Oh, yeah. yeah that's, that's another risk. People, stopped, yeah. people will start worshipping the guys mm. if he's a saint. He never, he never, he no attacks or anything, but people start making him like he's, yeah. he's from the heavens. Because people yeah, used to come around the world. That's, that's, my, that's the reason he stopped doing Misguided mm, people. And unfortunately, he's in I'm Egypt. He's yeah, from Egypt. Yeah. I've had bad experiences where I was so desperate and needed help. I believed mm. certain people. They said they were Iraqis and spiritual healers. Mm -hmm. But you went to them. This is after Abu Ibrahim. No, this is before him. Okay, this before. Him. Okay, tell me about these people who you went to. There's recently there's one uh, Indian guy, but I didn't right. go to him. I'll come to him later. Right. But there's one African guy. This is before I knew about Rukia. This is before I knew about what what a sahir is and things like that. May Allah forgive me for my Allah 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 uh, Allah. if I had known what it was I never would have gone. But mm -hmm. the, <coughs> the guy said you know he, he did uh, Quranic readings and things like that. And uh, but he used to draw effigies and uh, when he used to read, read Quran or read recites verses, then he's also muttering under his under, uh, quietly and I couldn't hear what mm -hmm. he was saying. He's but he, he, his eyes would roll up and I would see the whites of his eyes and then I realized, okay, this guy's not, he's not, he's not legit. He's not legit. I think he's doing magic. Mm. And, um, and he had lots of people. possessed because if his eye rolls, what? Exactly, mm. exactly. Mm. And I, he used to have a white drawing board. He had, he had effigies of stick figures of people on there. And he had strange, uh, strange patterns and whatnot. Draw, yeah, yeah, numbers draw, and draw. things. Yeah, like. I thought this, this, this. It's not right. So this, and I felt really ashamed because I was unwittingly drawn into something that is haram, that is shirk. And I felt so ashamed. Uh, he gave me some oil, some some water to rub over my body, but I didn't. I just threw it into the canal. Alhamdulillah. So Good, I, yeah. My yeah. parents, when we were a kid, uh, they used to give me dawis to wear, and I hated it. I didn't like wearing dawis. Used to take it off and throw it. And my dad used to hit me for that. Alhamdulillah. And he said, but you know, at the end of the day, you don't know what's written on the dawis. Yeah, absolutely. And true. if they write, if they write strange symbols on there or uh, boxes, like a, a, yeah, crossword boxes. It's always uh, four boxes or three boxes. Mm -hmm. The writing in Seher. They can write to, to hundred types of sand. Exactly. Yeah, the writing. So, so you, they try to use magic to break magic, but at the end day, there's no such thing as white magic. All magic is black magic, and all magic is shirk, is good, but and it's haram. That's absolutely true. So you know that was a bad experience for me. The African guy. Yeah. After that, where did you go from there? 
a few years later, um, that's when he came across the friend at university. All right, yeah. friend, okay, that's when he leads you to the Rukia and everything. Yeah. All right. But his friend, the Rafi, he went back to Tanzania. All right. Then I was on my own for some years. Then I came across the brother in Birmingham uh, with his exes of diary videos. All right, all right. After, and then after that, when you find out, when he told you that, you need several that. sessions. Yeah, but unfortunately, I only managed to have one session with him and then he stopped doing it. So I was on my own again. So I thought, okay, I'll just try and download Rukia's. And I found Rukia's from YouTube. Which I downloaded and which I used to listen to on a regular basis. Mm. So Rukia's for Sihir, Rukia's for Ain, which is evil eye, Rukia for Hasad, jealousy, Rukia for Masaha. Yeah, which alhamdulillah. Which yeah. So, so that's what, what happens when you listen to these? Or how do you feel? I feel calm and relaxed. And no reaction though. I do get reaction. When you're the Abdul Bali, his Rukia audio CD. Wahid Bali. Yeah. I, I get really <laughs> bad pins and needles in my arms and legs and like big vibration sensations. I'm, uh, sometimes my arms and legs start jerking up and down. I'm mm. not controlling it. Mm. I'm not controlling it. Uh, it just happens. But which one do you find more interesting, more uh, beneficial? The one you go live to the person or the one you, you listen to the CD? This is the thing, because there's one guy I spoke to in Sheffield, and he did Rukia. This is, I saw him five, five years ago. He, I got no reaction with him. And he concluded that I ha I'm afflicted with some types of jinns. One of the types of jinns I'm suffering from is a flying jinn. And when the Rafi starts giving Rukia, he'll grab the Sihir that's inside my body, take it out of my body and fly away. And after the Rukia is finished, he said it'll come back to me. Is that the Indonesian guy? Uh, no, th this, was some, this was some Arab guy. I think he's Kurdish. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah. This is not correct. You cannot have all this information. Did yeah. you go to him or did, did he do on YouTube? I, I went to him personally. Oh, I right. had a good chat with him. I thought he was a good uh, brother. I thought, okay, right, I'm going to have a chat with him. But... Uh, I was a bit disappointed and I had some doubts as well mm -hmm. and I never went back to him. Mm -hmm. He did read Quran, he didn't do anything dodgy, right. but he had... His he, thinking. His thinking and it's, 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 it seemed like he had knowledge of the unseen and I thought, okay. This is not correct. Yeah. Yeah. You cannot go beyond to what the book says and the experience, that's it. What the book says and experience. Yeah. Full stop. Uh, after that, I thought, you know what, I can't rely on most people because most of the people are they're not trustworthy. So I'll have to help myself and ask Allah to help me until I find a brother who is 100% trustworthy. Mm. So brothers and sisters, what I used to do, I started reading Surah Fatiha, Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Imran every day. Alhamdulillah, every that's day good. I started that's good. That's very good. I got good. up for Fajr and then after praying Fajr, I pray Surah Yasin as well. Alhamdulillah. Let me just say one thing is, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Surah Al-Baqarah is the one which is got blessings. Yeah. So Surah Al-Baqarah, when you read frequently, the blessing is of yours open. Yeah. Only Allah knows best which type of blessings. Okay. As the other surahs is Quran you're supposed to read, yeah. but Surah Al-Baqarah is the one which has been recommended. Yeah. Mm. And yeah. then after that, you recently told me that you went to a sahir, you contacted him and he started. Well, well, to be honest, I, I'm really disappointed because I live in a city which has got a high Indian Muslim population and they're Gujarati speaking. And the thing is, uh, unfortunately, a lot of them are actually Diobandi. Mm. And uh, they have a lot of practices and belief systems, which, and uh, I apologize, I'm, this is not my intention to offend anyone, mm. so please don't be angry with me. But um, they have a lot of um, belief systems which is not in line with Islam. Yep, so it's, uh, it's a uh, They have a prayer called Dua Itaj. And if you read the English translation, it says in there, that um, Usulullah and his ancestors can create life and can cure sickness. Uh, so Google Dua Itaj and the English translation, and it's it's just it's not. It's crazy. They said they have they have they have beliefs which leads to shirk. Yeah. Or which is shirk. Yeah. Mm. And what's really shocking was that I was, th was talking to the Mawlana in my local masjid, and you know he's also a Gujarati guy, and uh, I told him my father said, look, do you know any brothers who do rukia, proper rukia? And I need to find trustworthy brothers because yeah, yeah, he, he, you know, he does know a guy. So the guy who referred me to was an uh, he didn't do rukia, but he phoned me uh, last week. Uh, uh, you phoned him or he phoned you? He phoned me. He messaged me uh, yeah. because the brother, the, uh, the Mulan, most gave my name number to him, and then he contacted me. Subhanallah. Then he wants me to call back, and then I had a basically I had a chat with him, and uh, he wanted me to give my name, my date of birth, my mother's name, date of birth and my father's name, date of birth. Straight up, thought, okay, Sahir. And um, mm. basically, I, I, said to, I said to him, look, bro, brother, I, you know, I tried to uh, be as polite as possible and try to 
find a polite excuse out of that situation. I said to him, look, I don't understand why uh, I need to give my name, date of birth, and my mother's date of birth, and name, and my father's name, my name, date of birth, things like that, and I need to think about it. And uh, But uh, I, I politely ended the conversation, said, look, let me do istikhara, if that's okay with you. And uh, I just want to make sure that uh, I'm happy, and there's no doubt in my mind, because I've had bad experiences in, in the past. And to be honest, he was polite about it. He said, okay, aapki mozi, meaning, you know, whatever you wish. Uh, but during Does the he speak English? No, uh, he speaks very little English. He's uh, actually from India. He speaks mostly uh, uh, Gujarati and Urdu. Mm. <clears throat> but um, during the conversation, we're speaking in Urdu, and uh, he wanted me. He wanted kept asking me, "So, what's your full name? Uh, where are you from originally? Where are your parents from?" And uh, all these questions. And it was like it, it was very sneaky. It was a bit, you know, it was a bit of a booby trap, to be honest. Uh, it was a minefield trying to get trying to get through that conversation without without giving away too much information, without offending him, or offending his Karin or other jinns. So hopefully I politely managed to extract That's myself from that situation. Yeah. But uh, I, I'm not going to go to him there, no way. Yeah, may Allah make it easy for you. May Allah remove the difficulty and everything you're going through. At the moment, is there anything changed in your life in terms of these possessions or anything? N nothing, you know, sometimes there's some temporary relief, uh, you know. For how long? can range from a few days to a week and then it, things go back and this is another problem I had to appeal for against my degree classification because they give me a third class even though I got first class marks and the only reason I eventually gave my degree uh, to one and I reluctantly took it is because seven days before they awarded my degree I was so frustrated I was crying at night and in the morning and I've been reading Fajr and reading Surah Yasin then I thought I have to start reading Surah Al-Baqarah every day so every day for seven days I started reading Surah Al-Baqarah and Wallahi uh, I got an email from the university and they agreed to award me 2 1. So I just took it. My mum and brother said, Take it and get on with your life. And I believe that only happened because of the, uh, the Barakah from reading Surah Al Baqarah. Yes, and Allah, for, because of Allah. But there's a brother I know who's a pharmacist and he knows all these brothers. And uh, he put me in touch with him and he's a, apparently a Raqi uh, based in the Midlands. And I had a lot of problems and I have a lot of gin problems from my bathroom and toilet. And I, when I go to the bathroom toilet do my business, I always have like really bad... So this brother in the Midlands, what did he do when you He told me to spray Rukia water in the bathroom. And uh, what happened was that my problems became much worse. Instead of becoming better, it became much worse. And basically, every time I go into a bathroom now, I get really bad... Like Rukia water? What sort of Rukia water? The Quranic one? The Quranic one. How and can I, you spray? Him, I said to him, are you sure I, I can spray this in the bathroom? Because you're not supposed to spray Quran water in, in the Absolutely bathroom. true. Yeah. And he said to me, oh, it's all right. As long as it goes in the walls and not in the toilet, it's fine. And well, I said, this doesn't sound right. Yeah, he's, well, he's, he's got wrong understanding. You see, today there's a lot of rakis out there. Yeah. Just, some of them just know how to read the Quran. And yeah. That's it. But because of his bad advice, I ended up much worse for the wear. Mm. And now I have really severe... Uh, Masaha, and I, it's because of the Shaitan bath and toilet jeans. They really hate me now, and they keep attacking, possessing me. I get really bad pins and needle sensations, and they go in through my feet, they go up my legs. Yeah, that's where they start. And they go into my yeah. stomach and yeah. my intestines, and I always have bloating stomach. Yeah. And the jeans from the toilet. Yeah. Mm. And I, I have really bad. How do you know when you go in the toilet? That's how you feel. I get uh, I get really bad like electric shock sensations in my hands and feet. In the toilet. Yeah. And they, they go mainly through my toes, into yeah. my feet, up my legs, and then into my intestines and stomach. Because yeah. then I have a lot of pains in my intestines and in my stomach and have a lot of bloating. Mm. And I have very poor digestion because of it. I believe all my health problems is caused by Sahih Masaha. I have no mm. doubt about that. Mm. Yeah, black magic in possession. May Allah make it easy for you and remove the difficulty you're going through. Inshallah, I ask the viewers to make dua for Brother Abdullah and... Uh, May Allah relieve him from this distress he's been going through for several years and it is so many years. Uh, imagine from four years old until now and his problem started while he's in the belly according to his testimony. We ask Allah to make it easy for Abdul Abdullah and everyone who's viewing this video and everyone who's facing difficulties with the possession and magic and everything. Allahumma amin. Brother, can I say one more thing? Yes, yes, carry on. Uh, you know, I, it was always my childhood dream that I wanted to become a doctor. Yeah, I've lived in 
in India for one year. I've been to India many times. I've seen the poverty that people suffer over there. Right. And it breaks my heart. I wanted to become a doctor. I know. I wanted to join Doctors Without Borders. And I wanted to go overseas to third world countries to help people. And it breaks my heart that I've not been able to, been able to achieve my dreams. And it kills me inside. You, know, you, you still have the chance to go and learn, you know. You still but I need to find a way to have this Zahra Masaha removed. Yeah, I should not uh, stop yourself because you have Zahra. I tried, push brother, yourself to go. Brother, I tried, but this yeah. is the problem because it's in Masaha, everything goes wrong. Yeah. I tried applying for universities. Uh, they, they initially gave really good responses, yeah. but then it's always something always went wrong. And then I got rejected every time. This is called Sihr al Yeah. Uh, like magic of failure. Yeah. Everything you touch is goes down. Exactly. It's not Sihr al-Masaha, it's Sihr al Yeah. Everything you touch, that's it. I watched, no, your, I watched your video, YouTube yeah. video about it. Yeah. And I said to my brother, I said, Babe, this is my biggest problem, Sihr al Fashal. Yeah. Sihr al Fashal yeah. is, is a lot of people have it. Anything you touch, dust. Yeah. Business, dust. If you want to get married, failure. I can't achieve anything in yeah, my life. Yeah. No job, no job, no wife, no kids, no house, nothing. No career, nothing. Mm -hmm. I've been trying so hard for, since I got my degree in 2016 to get a graduate job. And I just can't get a job. Mm -hmm. There's always, always something goes wrong. May Allah make it easy for you. And remove the difficulty you are going through. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا فإنه هو الغفور الرحيم.